Part two of how I fell for <laughs> my sneaky link. When I got out of the shower, I went directly to my phone. When I picked it up and opened TikTok, I had a message from the man himself. Okay, so boom, <laughs> what up though? Now I didn't know if I was gonna be fanned out or if I was just gonna approach him in a normal manner. So I'm sitting here puzzling and rambling in my mind like, what do I say, what do I say? So I went with Old Faithful, hi. I don't remember the extent of the messages cause it was short and sweet on TikTok because it wasn't what, not even a day or so before I had the man's number. Now before y'all come for me, no I did not know it was plastered all over the internet and you guys probably had it way before me, I didn't care about that. I got the man's number when I was on a plane headed to Miami. When I got to Miami, I was chilling in the room for the most part. I did go down to the pool and I met this woman named Damien Flanagan. For those of y'all who don't know, go check out on Instagram. She's a pretty dope woman. She the CEO of the Goat Blue, you know, because I wear my wigs faithfully. While I'm in Miami, minding my ever-loving business, yes, Anthony was with me. Yes, my brothers and them was with me. But I was in my hotel room on the phone on a FaceTime with Mr. OK So Boom himself. Of course, he asked me his questions and all. And this is before I knew the nitty gritty of who this man was. He's like, so what you doing out there? What you got on? Let me see. And y'all know me being mannish and fast as hell. I got on my black top, my black bottoms, and I got this white sheer thing over me. I walk in front of the camera because I done posted my phone up and everything. He talking about, oh, you poking. <laughs> and for those of y'all who know, y'all know what poking me. So him with the wonder and I, I'm guessing he saw a little too much, a little too fast. He was like, oh, so you got tattoos and that's my green light. Oh, I get to show you some thighs now. So I opened the little sheer part and I'm like, yeah, you know, I got a little something. I got these when I was 14, 15, supposed to be at church and I'm at the tattoo shop. He laughed it off like, <laughs> yeah, that ain't nothing compared to the lifestyle I lived as a kid. I felt real comfortable with this man really fast and I began exposing parts of my life that I never told anybody when I first met them. I was telling him how I went and did four months at East Baton Rouge Parish Prison, how I was molested, the lifestyle that I had as a kid growing up in foster care, how families didn't want us and if they wanted my sister, they didn't want me. Real life exposing things that make me cry in the dark that I don't want to tell people about. Whether it was real or not, he seemed to really understand. He seemed to really care about what I was saying, which drew me in even more, even faster. Our conversation lasts a little bit longer and he said that he had to go. I ended up hanging up the phone and I began to make some little twerking videos and all of that. Being fast and managed as before. And I sent it to him. He sent me a little heart face with the big old googly eyes like, can I see more? You know, before y'all come for me, you know, he was not asking for no nudes or nothing. So calm down. Relax, Karens. We proceeded to text over the course of my vacation in Miami. But I knew for a fact when I got back home, I had to figure out the master plan to get this man to Dallas. Y'all already know, link in the bio. Part one of this book is available now. This mug is juicy. 